Hi, so um, yeah, so this talk is about um, evicting HTTP from the JVM ecosystem uh, supply chain, um, also known as how I ended up generating 1,596 pull requests to fix an ecosystem wide security vulnerability. Um, hi, so uh, my name is Jonathan Leitchu. I'm a security, uh, software security engineer and security researcher. I'm currently at Gradle Inc. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at jlightchu and also on GitHub. Um, same way. Uh, so one of the questions that I get asked a lot is like how, like why do you end up doing the research you're doing? Um, I have ADD, I get distracted. Uh, yeah, very much highway to, hey, look a squirrel. So um, this is kind of how this project fell out too. Um, so let's start with why is HTTPS important in the um, in, in supply chain, right? So um, if you don't have HTTPS in place, if you're not using an SSL secure connection to download your artifacts, you really have no guarantee that you're actually getting the artifact that you are asking for. Um, and uh, um, so there's a long history here of, um, of, of all of our supply chains in a lot of our ecosystems being built on HTTP based technology and then realizing, oh, hey, um, we need to upgrade to HTTPS uh, and support HTTPS. Um, and uh, so if you're if you are um, downloading these artifacts over HTTP, somebody can sit in the middle and and inject their own code into your into your artifact supply chain. Um, and this uh, was actually um, originally um, disclosed uh, by uh, Max Beetzman um, with a project called uh, Dilente. Uh, I have a hard time saying this word. Um, Dilettante. And what he disclosed was that um, there was uh, originally um, Maven Central, which is the biggest artifact server used to supply artifacts uh, to the Java ecosystem, um, only offered artifacts over HTTP. And they offered um, HTTPS if you spent, spent uh, a ten, if you offered a ten, uh, ten dollar uh, donation to the Apache Foundation. Um, and he published this article called How to Take Over the Computer of Any Java or Closure or Scala Developer, um, which called out Sonotype um, for this practice. And because of this, um, and as part of this, Max built a proof of concept called Dilant uh, Dilettante um, that is an HTTP proxy that injects JVM bytecode into jars downloaded over SSL. Um, and so this is actually his proof of concept where um, he injected code into Joda time. And then when you run a simple like hello world code, it actually pops a, um, uh, a swing UI component that says you didn't use SSL to serve your jars um, through the, because of this proxy. And his article, because of the blowback, um, forced on a type to offer HTTPS uh, by default. And this was only back in 2014. Um, so uh, I was, um, looking at my code at some point uh, in my company where I was working at at the time, and I saw this. I was like, there's a security vulnerability here. I have no idea how I got this here. Um, and I ended up tracking this down, and I, I ended up looking to see where I had ended up with this little bit of code. And it's because I copied and pasted this URL from the uh, official source code of the project that I was relying upon. So this is KTOR is a, is a Kotlin based web server framework. Um, and I had copied their URL out of their source code into my build because it's just easier to copy and paste URLs uh, than trying to figure out exactly what it is. And this got checked into source control. And I was like, huh, I wonder where else I can find this. Um, throughout the course of my research, some of the other, so this is in a Gradle build file. Um, here are some other places you can find this vulnerability in Gradle build files. Um, so in the build script logic, um, build scripts uh, are scoped to the entire project. Um, repositories are used just for just for your code that you're so so build script is 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 for um, uh, the the code that is used. It's it's like your dev dependencies NP, in npm. There these are dependencies that you resolve um, to build your software in Gradle. Um, repositories block is used um, here for um, the dependencies that you use in your like production code and tests. And then this logic where you see up upload archives is where you end up um, declaring how you're uploading your dependency or your artifacts when you publish, um, uh, when you publish things. 
Um, so if you're publishing over HTTP, you've also like generally leaked your credentials over an, a plain text connection as well. In uh, Maven, um, this is the same sort of logic that you'll see if it's insecure, um, a repository is blocked because Maven is XML based. So that this is where you'll see this sort of thing. Um, let me just kill my notifications. Just start the, I don't know if I click on that. Okay. Um, so uh, when I started looking for this, um, I was, okay, who else is vulnerable to this? Um, and what I ended up finding throughout the course of this research, just looking for these two kinds of examples of code was this vulnerability was very widespread. Um, it impacted a lot of very popular projects. Um, and so here are some examples. The Eclipse Foundation, Gradle was vulnerable, Red Hat, the Kotlin Project, Spring, Jenkins, um, the Groovy Project, the Apache Software Foundation, Elasticsearch, Jet, JetBrains, um, I found these same these vulnerabilities in all these projects code. Um, I also found it in Oracle software, the National Security Agency projects, LinkedIn, Stripe. Um, just the list goes on. Uh, Port Swigger also had this vulnerability in one of their projects. Um, and uh, I ended up doing some research on like where does this like where what what repositories were these like what dependency repositories were these vulnerabilities mostly appearing from. So I did, GitHub search is fuzzy at best. Um, so you don't get this, these numbers are not 100% accurate, but I did a search for these URLs in XML, in these various Gradle and Maven files. And the results that I got back were, um, when I was doing this research approximately like 40,000, you know, you can see the numbers here, um, of, of how many uses of these URLs I saw in Maven builds and how many uses of these, of these URLs I saw in Gradle builds. Um, and so this was clearly a very widespread issue across, um, across GitHub and open source projects. And so I started thinking, okay, like how do we fix this problem, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a very large wide scale problem. Um, I ended up publishing an article um, in uh, uh, June of last year. Uh, I don't know if that's actually accurate. Um, I published an article called um, want, to uh, want to Take Over the Java Ecosystem, All You Need is a Man in the Middle. And this was published on uh, June 10th of 2019. Um, and this was part of my, it was like a kickoff of like disclosing to the, you know, the public how widespread this true vulnerability was. Um, and I reached out at this point to um, uh, Sonatype, which is the company that runs Maven Central, which was the first artifact host in the Java ecosystem to open, to have offer a free open, uh, artifact hosting service for the ecosystem. And um, they came back with this interesting result after a month of the research. They said 25% of Sonotype Maven Central downloads are still using HTTP. Um, and this was back um, when I disclosed my article. Um, so, you know, a significant percentage of the JVM ecosystem was vulnerable to this supply chain man in the middle attack. Um, and so as part of this understanding of like how big the scope of this problem was, I said, okay, let's fix this. Like, let, like let's, and so I pioneered a uh, initiative uh, talking to a bunch of the artifact hosts in the Java ecosystem saying, let's fix this by killing support for HTTP for all of you. And so um, on January 15th, 2020, um, all of these different artifact hosts uh, collectively on, on or around January 15, 2020, stepped in together and said, we're going to collectively drop support for HTTP um, and only support HTTPS. So instead of redirect, it's not even a redirect because a redirect uh, from HTTP to HTTPS actually hides the vulnerability. Um, it still exists because you can, as an attacker, you can keep the connection downgraded. Um, so all of these artifact hosts agreed and followed through with um, just completely dropping support for HTTP. And yes, there was a lot of broken so software and a lot of comments on Stack Overflow. Um, thankfully, the world is not on fire. I, I do remember having a couple of issues reading some stories about some things that had broken because of this. Um, but on the whole, you know, it seems like the, you know, industry has moved forward and, succe and succeeded in, yeah. Um, so enter CodeQL. Um, so the GitHub Security Lab project was a really, really cool um, addition to uh, this, this problem because it meant that um, with GitHub rolling this out, we could, um, I could write a query um, that would find this vulnerability 
in Maven POM files. And I was really, it was really awesome to, to, to find out that they were actually parsing these XML files um, as part of the uh, CodeQL project. And um, so I was able to write this very simple query that finds uh, the repository block or the snapshot repository block or the plugin repository block in these XML files that are the, the POM files um, and look for uh, HTTP or FTP usage. Um, very simple query and alert on that. And for this very simple query, as a part of the all for one, one for all uh, GitHub Security Lab bug bounty program, um, when I submitted this query to them, um, they were kind enough to offer me a, a $2,300 bounty for this, um, including the documentation and, and all of that. Um, and so once I had this query, um, I asked some of this, uh, this, the team at, um, uh, GitHub and I said, can you run this query against all of the projects that you have results for and can you give me that data back? And kindly enough, they did. Um, so what I was able to do with that, sorry, I'm catching up with my slides on my notes, um, is so from this, um, they, we were able to, this, the, uh, this results are now generated and presented in the LG team UI. You can go and look at all the alerts that are generated, but I needed this cohesively into a single data set. Um, and I figured, okay, if I have all of the results of all of the projects that LGTM has indexed, um, I can take that information and I can generate pull requests to fix this vulnerability. Um, and so I, you know, I figured, you know, it's open source, kill vulnerability, you know, kill these vulnerabilities, fire. Uh, the other part of it that was kind of fun was, um, you know, I did a little bit of math. And I figured for, at the time, the bug slayer vulnerability uh, offered for like at four vulnerabilities, about $2,500. I did the math, I'm like 17, 1,700 repositories of this vulnerability, do math, potentially, no, that's probably not gonna happen, but you know, I, I figured I'd, you know, give it a shot. So, um, so how did I end up doing this? So um, I combined um, the GitHub Hub CLI um, with the Pi, GitHub, um, and some async IO and a lot of bouncing off the rate limiting, rate, rate limiting API. Um, and also, I live streamed it. Um, and so my, the, the, the project that I used is this project, I, I don't have it, any of it in the slides, but it's uh, called Bulk uh, Security Pull Request Generator. Um, and it's under my username, Jay Lightshu. Um, and I used it to uh, basically go through and check out every single one of these uh, projects that were vulnerable. I pulled the code down to my local machine. Um, I patched it using a regular expression. Um, I found out very quickly that you can't use XML parsers to fix XML code for this number of files because the problem with most XML parsers is that when you write the file back out, they all reformat it into whatever the format of the XML file formatter is, or what of the XML fi file format printer chooses to use, and that would have created massive diffs across every single pull request that I wanted to create. And I only wanted to change the specific lines that were vulnerable. And so um, uh, what I did was I, I just wrote a regular expression that went and found that, um, that one line that was using HTTP instead of HTTPS and just changed it to an S and changed all those files and um, committed it uh, and then created a fork and pushed it and ran into the rate, li rate limiting API. And for, I think this took like eight hours in the first pass and another eight hours. And so it was like 16 hours of CPU time for my one computer because I kept hitting that rate limiting API. Um, and at the end, it, it was complete. Uh, I generated 1,596, not 197, I say 197 because I actually had one of my own example projects in there that I used as a demo. So, you know, it was actually, one or fewer than all I put there. Um, uh, and currently 1, 179 of those pull requests had, had been merged at the time. Um, if you look, yeah, rip my GitHub notification feed after that um, because I did this under my, under my uh, personal account. I didn't create a, a secondary bot account for this. It's actually all bound to my GitHub account. Um, and also rip my uh, repositories list because now I have a ton of forks that I don't need. Um, but yeah, so currently, this is a snapshot that I just took before this talk. There's still 1,055 open pull requests um, and 504 closed. Um, so that means about 96 of them have been renamed um, to be something that, and I'm guessing that those additional have been closed. So we're almost at uh, 600 
pull requests having been merged or closed um, for this fix. Um, so yeah, and um, thanks to like the GitHub Security Lab team, um, they were real, they were kind enough to actually offer me a four thousand dollar bounty for this because of uh, going above and beyond what they even expected for the scope of uh, the um, uh, the 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 program or the program that I was submitting to. Um, so yes, that's that's the story of uh, my generating all these pull requests. Um, uh, yeah, are there any questions that have come up in the feed that I can answer quickly? Um, doesn't see like I had there's any there. Um, yeah, so I think that's me. Uh, I think Thank I think you, I'll... Nathan. <laughs> that yeah. was amazing, and I think yes, people will uh, hang out in the <clears throat> in the Twitch chat to to uh, uh, to talk with you. I'm pretty sure that Absolutely. was awesome. Absolutely. Um, so. It's amazing. We really hope to see more stories like this, right? Yeah. Uh, of actually fixing open source security at scale. This is really what we what we are looking for. Right. So and you guys, you, uh, you guys at GitHub reused the the bulk PR generator that I used to fix a different vulnerability. What was the other vulnerability that you guys used to fix with this um, generator? As well, it was some C plus plus yes. C yeah. vulnerability um, that was. Yeah, uh, I will try to find it back and uh, put it on the chat. I, I remember yeah. we, we, we we wrote a blog post about this. It was very cool to see that, that GitHub had taken my code now on the black blob. It's really cool to see that GitHub had taken the code that I'd written and, and then used it again for something else. So I have a plan. One of my plans is to use this also for Gradle um, builds. The problem that currently exists is there's no way with CodeQL to query Gradle builds to find these exact vulnerability locations. Um, so, uh, if I can find this data in some other way, uh, it's very much my plan in the future to do this same sort of work for Gradle builds. So, yeah, awesome. thanks. Cool. Uh, 